So boys, 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 welcome back. Today is going to be a bit of a transfer special. Probably obviously going to show you all the games that we have played in between how we've progressed on all our tournaments. Sold a bunch of people, brought a bunch of people in. I have tinkered with the formation a little bit. Still probably playing five at the back. It's going to be my favorite. We have a lot of attack and talent between Garnaccio and Rashford and Hoysland and Anthony and Sancho and a bunch of other people that have kind of brought into the team. We do have a lot of talent. So I kind of want to start putting that to use. First things first, let's show you the people we've sold and brought in. So then, one of the first ones out the door was Rafael Varane. Probably had talked about this. Um, Al Nassar, one of the big teams with all that money, came in and offered us. Look, they offered us 40 million. I tried to get 45. They were having none of it. They just wanted to give us 40 million. And I thought, right, for a player, it's about to be 31. He's getting injury prone problems. And he half the time he doesn't play. And I was like, right, 40 million seems like really, really good money. And then, like I said, on top of that board, give us 35 million because we were doing good financially. So that gave us a lot of money to play. If I was 75 million off the rip between the board money and the money for Rafael Varane. Then I ran and sold Diego Delo. Look, this is one of those ones. He wasn't really massively over you playing. They offered 38 million. It does go up to 49 million with installments, which is fantastic. I thought 49 million for Diego Delo was absolutely fantastic. Look, I know he's still young, but he's at his max potential. He's not going to get any better than this, and he's just going to be a squad player. And I thought 49 million is a lot of money. Then the next one out the door was Harry Maguire. Look, Honestly, see if Maguire was like 25, 26, I'd have probably just kept him because one, he's English, he was doing pretty decent, he's big, he's strong, from corners he was doing very, very well. But then Newcastle come in and offered us a wee bit of money, 25 million, I was like 25 million for a 30 year old that doesn't really massively overly play in the team that much. And I was like, great, that's just sell. So probably 35 million from the board, 40 million for Varane, 49 million for Delo, the 25 for Maguire. We were looking pretty good money wise. So then at that point, Prevzi, we were going to need to beef up the defense a little bit. So Prevzi, there's a few people I wanted to bring in. Dave Mondi was one of the first players I wanted to bring in. My first option, of course, would have been Levy Caldwell. Look, he's English, he's fucking fantastic, has a ton of potential, but because he's English, and he plays for an English club in Chelsea. They wanted like 126 million for him. And I was like, look, I'm not paying that amount of money for centre back. He's fantastic. I would love to have him in, like I said, because he's English helps with registration. But I didn't want to pay that amount of money. And I was like, right, he's young, really, really good centre back, play with both feet. And that person is Antonio Silva. Look, only 20 years old, has a four and a half star potential, can play fantastic with both feet, six foot two. He can also play football, which is going to be the huge thing for him. We paid a total of 65 million for him, 40 up front, the rest in installments. I think a very, very good deal between him and Diamande. We've beefed up our defense very, very well. Then, of course, one of the other players that I brought in, this was going to be for a wee bit of sort of cover and a wee bit of depth was young Valentino Barco. This is one that we had already arranged. It's only 8 million. Look, it's one of those ones, 8 million. I mean, it's not like... We're paying like 30, 40, 50 million for him. Look, if it doesn't work out, it's fine. It's only 8 million. We can probably sell him on for more than that. He's already valued at 12 and a half to 15. He came to the club, got injured for a month. So I haven't really had a chance to play him. As you can see, he's only played one game and one off the bench. But although I think he looks very, very good. Look, good dribbling, good first touch. Mental stats are very, very good. Physical stats are good. He's very one-footed. Something we can work on with individual training. So I'm not going to worry about it too much. But this was more for squad depth. So then with us having a lot of money, I basically confirmed the deal for uh, Zeno de Bast. I think, look, once again, a very, very good squad player. We have a total of tw 25 million, basically had a 25 and a half million buyer clause. And I just activated it. We had already made a ton of million. So basically all I did was swap him for basically for, um, what do you call that, Numpty Maguire. <laughs> look, he's 6'4", can play fantastic with both feet. You know how like players that can play with both feet. And he's only 20 years old. He's only playing a two-star potential, has a potential to go to four. So he could get twice as good as this for 25 million. The one that I brought in was going to be one for the future. This is Harrison Mariah Campbell. One, he's English. He's only 17 years old. We paid a total of 5 million for him. Once again, if it doesn't work out, it's not a huge deal. Look, he's playing a one-star, has a potential to go up to four-star. So we can get four times as good as this. And he's also six foot one. Good jump and reach. He can play reasonably well with both feet. I think this is one of them ones. He's got good teamwork, good work rate. And I just looked at him and was like, look, for all the price of five million, he's going to help with registration. He can be, if, he, if it doesn't pan out, good squad player. Then one of the ones that I wanted to get in the door because I've heard this kid is fucking fantastic in this year's FM. On top of that, 16 years old. English. Plays fantastically with both feet. He's consistent. And that is young Mickey Moore. I've heard he's very, very good. Look, 
already at 16 years old good technique good vision dribble and finishing determination is fantastic good composure like i said can play fantastic at both feet we did have to pay a wee bit of money for him 35 minutes which to be honest i think is not that bad considering he plays for an english club and he's english but because he's only 16 i don't think that we're gonna ask for like crazy money i think 35 million for a 16 year old is absolutely outlandish but in the world of football manager i think this is gonna be a very very good signing for the future i have put him into the under 18s i know a lot of people are gonna be like mark play him play him play him i know but if you look at the players we already have in our positions i don't need to push a 16 year old into the manchester united team straight away so he is down in the under 18s like i said i'm probably going to give him a season or two seasons i know look here's my thing if i bring him up into the first team right i already have rashford i already have garnaccio i already have hoisland i have anthony i have sancho and then who the fuck else have we got? We've got a bunch of other people up there. So we already have like five to six really, really good attackers. And those are players that are like 21 to 26 already matured. God, that's the thing. Because Mickey Moore, he's a great player, but his physical stats is just going to get him absolutely destroyed in the Premiership. Like it is, like I know he becomes very, very good, but I would like to give him a couple of years in the under 18s, get a wee bit of football. The same as Shane Lacey. I've heard he is phenomenal as well. Only 16 years old. Once again, look how well he's progressing with me just letting them have some football in the under 18s. Look, he's already valued at 16 to 26 million, five star potential. I know a bunch of people were like, just play him, just play him. Look, give things time. So busy, Lacey, Moore, and Campbell are going to sit in the under 18s probably for a season, two seasons, just see how they kind of get on. I know they're going to be good. And then when the time's right, I'll bring them up into the first team. So then, with regards to the formation, this is kind of what I've been tinkering with. Look, Still the same back line, still Casemiro playing as a deep line forward. All I've done is basically put Mount as a centre midfielder in there by himself. And then I have Rashford and Anthony on one side. This is usually Gar Garnaccio, but he's currently not fit. And Hoisland. So basically three up top of the inside forwards. Like I said, here's the thing. Hoisland up top, we have Martial to cover for him. Anthony covers for Garnaccio on this side. And then Rashford, Sancho covers for him. So like I said, we have a lot of cover up here with a lot of very, very good players. So like I said, when the time is right, I will bring Lacey and I will bring um, Mickey Moore up into the team when the time is right. I just don't think the time is right right now. I know people are going to be screaming because look, all I, all I do with my teams is play Wonder Kids, but they've got to come into the team at the right time. It's the same with like uh, FM22, Arda Guller, amazing footballer, still phenomenal in this. But he's not ready to play yet because his physical stats are not there. He's just going to get through a round. Because I did play Mickey Moore for a few games just to kind of see how he was. I basically brought him on and he's just getting shoved off the ball. His pace isn't there yet. His physical stats aren't there yet. He was just getting pushed off the ball. He's not fast enough to pick up the ball and go around people. The Premiership's a hard league. There's a lot of really, really good players. Even the shit teams have really, really good players. So when the time is right, bring him up, boys. But this is the formation that's been doing really, really well. Like I said, one of the things that I have been doing is taking Bruno Fernandes out of the team. I know that a lot of people understand this. When Bruno is captain, we just don't seem to play as well. Casemiro is currently captain. Bruno is suspended anyway because he's been sent off like four fucking times already. And he's just constantly suspended. So he's one I don't know. I may keep in the team or move out. My plan is at some point is to move Mount in the DLP. Casemiro is 31, about to be 32, so we're only going to get a couple of seasons out of him. Going to move Mount into the DLP and then maybe play Dan Gore. This is one that I brought up from the reserves. Dan Gore, good dribbling, good first touch, good passing, good technique. Teamwork and work rate are fucking fantastic. Mental stats for a 19-year-old are really, really good. He can play fantastically with both feet. And also he's got good agility, good pace, good balance, good stamina, strength, Something we're going to need to work on, and he's a wee bit small, 5'7". So he's going to busy be sitting in here, in the he's technically in the first team, but he's not He's not going to start pretty obviously straight away, because I'm not going to take Mount out of the team, or Casemiro out of the team for him. But Dan Gore is one that I'm just going to gradually keep pushing into the first team, because I think with his mental stats, he could do absolutely phenomenal. So then with regards to results, you were here for the Liverpool game when we drew to each. Then we went and played City. Drew 0-0 with the Emmons. And then Prevzi, Bratislava in the Champions League. It was a game. If we won, we went through. We hammered them 3-1. Garnaccio, Anthony. Anthony? <laughs> Anthony and Scott McTominay scored for us. Then after that, we went and played Luton in the, the league. Basically, everybody was tired from the amount of games that we played. We drew with them one each. It is what it is. And Danny van der Beek scored for us. Then we played Aston Villa in a Caribou Cup quarterfinal. Mount and Rashford, Rashford, dude, Ma I can't read people's names right now. Mount and Hoisland scored for us. Then we played Burnley back in the Premiership, beat them 2-1. We had Bruno score and Kobe Maynard score. 
Then we played Aston Villa, beat them 3-1. Rashford, Bruno and Shaw scored for us. And then we played Bournemouth. Bruno scored and a penalty. And then in the 91st minute as well. And then we had Marcus score and Jadon Sancho score. Then in the league, as you can see, like I said, we're doing really, really well in the league. We're scoring goals. We're not conceding a ton, which is exactly what we want to be doing. We beat uh, Sheffield United 2-1. Look, it would have been a game. Honestly, I have never seen us hit the woodwork so many fucking times as we did in this game. We had so many shots. This could have been about a 7-1. Like, no joking. The, the amount of times we hit the post and the crossbar was wild. But we got the three points. Bruno scored both of the goals for there. Then we played West Brom in the FA Cup third round. I, I changed the team a little bit. Beat them 2-1. Shaw got both of them. Which is a, One of them was a back post header against a dude that was like six foot four. I don't know how he won it, but he did. I'm not going to complain about it. Then the big one was playing Man City in the Caribou Cup semi-final. This is between, I think it was here... The Sheffield United game, I changed the formation and then we played City. We beat City 6-0 and they had a full team out. We just ripped them to bits. Uh, Rasmus got two, Marcus got a hat trick and Kobe Maynard got one. So basically that was a good way to start off the semi-final because then if we beat City, we go into the final. In the second leg, they beat us 3-1. I rotated the team because we were tired and we had already hammered them 6-0. Look, they, we ended up beating them 7-3, so I wasn't really too worried about it. But in between that, we played Brighton in the Premiership, beat them 3-1. Casemiro, Rashford and Hoysland got the goals for us. Then we played City in the FA Cup. We ended up putting them out. So we basically put them out of the Caribou Cup and the FA Cup in pretty much like the same week. Anthony scored and Anthony Martial scored one in the 95th minute. Then we played Brentford. I don't know. We got FM'd. Honestly, people laugh and joke, but being FM'd is actually a real thing. Like We went from playing City, beating City twice. We were passing the ball around. We were pinging it. It was like fucking ticky tack of football. Everything was going well. Then we played Brentford and like we couldn't pass the ball fucking 20 foot to each other like the defenders were trying to pass the ball to each other and it was going straight to the attacker and i was like what is going on so we basically we got fm'd then after we got fm'd we basically went and played aston villa in the Premier league so we beat them 6-2 casemiro got one mount got two rashford got a hat trick and rasmus hoisling got one honestly mason mount was absolutely phenomenal this game i think yeah yeah you get man of the match you get a 10 he was phenomenal he was pulling the strings for everything then we went and played fulham in the league beat them 2-0 Kobe Maynard got one and Marcus Rashford got one so then that takes us to the Premiership as you can see we are not far behind City now we are two points like I said we haven't beat them in the league yet but we've put them out of two cups <laughs> I would like to try and beat them once in the league because if we were to beat them that takes us above them and we are so close I also know that Arsenal are pretty close behind us but they've also played a game in hand the funny thing is we're not on the goals we're not on the average ratings we're not on the assist the only thing we're in here for I'll actually turn the camera off so you can see is busy we're in here for yellow cards <laughs> look it doesn't matter what you're on the stats for as long as you're there for something yellow cards mean the team's digging in the bad thing is with Bruno like I said I don't know Bruno's a fantastic player and I do want to keep him in the team I just don't think having Bruno as captain is going to be the option but then what's going to happen if I take Bruno off the captaincy at the start of next year is the whole team going to rack is like if you look at the team there's still there's a few of them they're still upset Anthony's always upset there's a few that are probably still a wee bit upset like Hannibal's upset Gusto's upset Malassi is upset Sancho's upset but the rest of the team thankfully has kind of sort of started to settle down as we've won a few games this there was a lot of like sort of like SPTs over the team is he slight concerns as soon as we won the city game like 6-0 a lot of those dropped off I don't know if maybe and this FM like the players complain a lot or or it's just because I come into the team and I was like right you're going you're going you're going you're going <laughs> which I understand a lot of the players have spent a lot of time together and somebody comes in and just starts like selling people but it was people I think we didn't need Maguire fucking rubbish Christian Eriksen I think is a fantastic player I just don't think he has the legs to play in the premiership I don't if he went to like the German league I think he would be absolutely phenomenal or something like that or the Italian league where it's a wee bit slower I just think the premiership's too fast for Christian Eriksen he just doesn't have the legs or he's one of those players you bring on at like 70th minute when you need like a couple like a wee passes or someone to hold it down i think he's very very good if you give him the ball and he's got a wee bit of time erickson's fantastic it just he doesn't have the legs he would need to be put in like a turquoise the role where he just kind of sits like if he was just sitting like here and behind a couple of strikers he would do fantastic but like he ends up playing like center midfield or in beside casemiro as like a double pivot 
He just doesn't have the legs for it. Which, no, I mean, it is what it is. No, I mean, you, some people have more natural fitness than others. You can't really do anything about that. It's just like some people are just naturally more fit than others. But this is the formation I think we're going to go with. Between the players that we've brought in, the young players, like I said, I know people are going to be screaming at me to bring Mickey Moore and Shea Lacey up. Look, when the time is right, they will come into the team. Where they're going to play? Who fucking knows? But boys, I think that's going to be a good spot to stop off for this episode. Like I said, I told you it was going to be a transfer special. We have brought a lot of players. I think the players we've brought in are absolutely fantastic. Look, we get rid of Maguire, 30 years old. Varane, 30 years old. The low, a bit player that was probably maybe going to get into the team. And we got 49 million for him, which is absolutely wild. People have told me, like I've been reading the comments, people have been saying... Um, the Saudi league ends up coming in and offering like crazy money for Bruno if you play him quite a lot. So that could be an option. Look, I don't think this is all Bruno's fault. It's not. Like where the team is playing really, really well. He just, he, he gets sent off a lot. I just don't think Bruno as captain suits the team well. I would, I still want to keep him in the team. He's a phenomenal player. I just don't think I'm as, I think having him as captain. I would rather have like maybe, I don't know, Casemiro or Shaw or one of them. It's like somebody who's playing in the back line, has a wee bit more experience. Bruno. Even in real life, he's a wee bit temperamental. Like, I think we can all agree about that. If we're United fans, we're being serious. Bruno's a wee bit temperamental. Phenomenal player, but he just loses the fucking plot sometimes. And that feeds into the rest of the team. But boys, that is going to be a good spot to stop off for today's video. Thank you very much for watching. Remember, like, comment, subscribe. Only if you fucking want to. And YouTube, have yourselves a fantastic day.